This is the first video on Angular Kinematics, and I'm going to discuss some preliminary considerations. Our first preliminary consideration is that when we are talking about angular motion, we are going to refer exclusively to rigid bodies. Now, what do I mean by a rigid body? A rigid body is a body whose dimensions won't change. So, for example, let's say that we have a body and that we identify two points on that body. Let's call those points A and B. And there's going to be a certain length between points A and B. Now, no matter what I do, I can take that rigid body and I can move it from one side to the other side. I can move it up. I can move it back down. I can sit here and I can rotate it. And no matter what I do, the distance between those two points will remain fixed. So a baseball bat would be a very good example of a rigid body because any distance between two points and a baseball bat will not change unless, of course, you break the bat. A garden hose, though, would be an example of something that would not be a rigid body. The distance between any two points on that garden hose may change depending on if you coil or if you unravel the hose. Next, we have to talk about frames of reference. Remember, for any biomechanical analysis, we first must establish a frame of reference. That frame of reference is going to have both an origin as well as directions. And when we were talking in one dimension, whether we were talking in two directions or just one direction in one dimension, we talked about simply moving along a particular axis. And by convention, we usually talked about that horizontal axis as being the x direction and that vertical axis as being the y direction. When we talked about two-dimensional kinematics, we simply combined both the x dimension and the y dimension together. And again, any direction that was positive, the opposite one would be negative. So we had our positive x and we had our negative x. We had our positive y and we had our negative y. So now let's talk about what happens when we're talking about angular ranges of motion. Well, again, first we can talk about that x and y dimension like we were talking about previously. And we can also think about having that third dimension or that third axis which in this case would be pointing out of the screen. Now, if we have a body that is going to be rotating, it is going to be rotating about that axis that's coming out of the screen, so about that Z axis. And if it's rotating about that Z axis, it's actually rotating in a plane that would be perpendicular to that Z axis. So in this case here, we could say that a body would be rotating about the Z axis, in the xy plane. And if the positive z axis is coming out of the screen, that would mean that the negative z axis would be going into the screen. Now we're going to go ahead and we are going to get rid of that y axis for the time being. And we are going to understand that we are going to be rotating about this z axis that's coming out of the screen. So with that said, we are going to be left with a reference axis in that positive x direction. So we have this reference axis. Again, that's going to be the positive x direction. And we are going to say that anything that rotates in that counterclockwise direction will be rotating in the positive direction. And that would mean that anything that's rotating in the clockwise direction would be rotating in the negative direction. Now again, when you are establishing a frame of reference, you can establish that frame of reference which having any origin where you want it, and you can make any direction you want positive versus negative. The only real rule is that once you've established it, you don't want to change it midway through your analysis because that would really mess things up. But as far as I'm concerned, we are always going to say that we are going to have that positive x-axis and then any rotations that are going to occur in the counterclockwise direction will be positive and any rotations in the clockwise direction will be negative unless otherwise noted. 
And that's some preliminary considerations that we have for angular kinematics. Now we can go on and we can talk about some kinematic variables.